Welcome to the Math 223 video for the Week 10 Asynchronous Activity. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. I'm one of the instructors for Math 223. In this activity, we'll make a connection between the null space and the image space for a general n by n matrix. It's assumed that you've already done these activities, and here I'll be walking through my solutions of them, but you'll get a lot more out of this activity if you do it on your own first. The first thing we'll need is to remember the definitions of rank, image, null space, and dimension. The rank is the number of leading ones in the reduced right echelon form of A. The image space is everything that looks like AX. So you take your matrix A and you multiply it by every single vector you can. All of the possible outputs is called the image space. The null space is the set of all solutions to the homogeneous system AX equals zero. And the dimension of a subspace is uh, the number of parameters you need to express every vector in U. It's also the size of a basis. Um, this will make more sense in context. Now on the surface, the image space and the null space seem to have nothing to do with each other, but in this activity we'll connect them. This activity has two parts. The first, act, the first part goes through an example. So for this matrix A, we're, we're telling you that its reduced row echelon form is this. So if A is an M by N matrix, what is N? M is the number of rows right here, and N is the number of columns. So the answer is N. So the answer is four. What's the rank? It has two leading ones, so the rank is two. Now let's find bases for the image in the null space. We'll start with the null space since it's trickier. To find the dimension, sorry, to find the basis of a null space, we need to write down all of the solutions to the homogeneous system. This is an activity we've done many times before in the course. Here we have Z being a parameter, and here we have W being a parameter. And then for the columns with leading ones, we can write them in terms of the other two. So if we express this um, in column form, we'll get the solutions like this. And then here are our two basic solutions. So if you collect the two basic solutions together, you'll get the basis of the null space. What about for the basis of the image space? This one's a little bit stranger. If you have the reduced row echelon form, you look at the columns that contain a leading one. Then you go back over to your original matrix A and those columns will form the bases. So here column one and column two contain a leading one. So we take column one and column two from A and that forms our bases. There we go, column one and column two. Now we're ready to compute the dimension of both of these. In the first one, we have two parameters. So our dimension is two. For the second one, we have two elements of the basis, so the dimension is two. So both of these are two. So now I'm collecting all the information we already had, and now we're ready to finish. Let's check that the dimension of A and the rank of A are the same. Well, the dimension of A is two. We compute it because there are two things here. And the rank is two, since there were two leading ones. Now, if we were to write down a relationship between n dimension a and dimension of the null space of a, well, both of these are two and this is four, so it could be any one of these three things. Which one of them is the most relevant for us? It's not exactly clear just from knowing the two, that both of these things are two and this is four. So in the next exercise, we'll help to figure out which of these three things is the most relevant. So sometimes working with small examples is helpful, and other times it's helpful, but it doesn't quite tell you all of the information you want. So working in full generality might help you. All right, now let's get to the more general um, argument. So here we're working towards one of the most important theorems in linear algebra. It's a relationship between the dimension of A, the dimension of the null space of A, and N. So why should the dimension of A be the rank of A? 
In the previous example, we computed it, and they, we saw that they were the same, but why should they be the same? Well, let's look at how we computed each of them. The rank of A is the number of leading ones. The dimension of A, well, how did we, the dimension of the image of A, how did we choose things to be in the image of A? We chose the basis based on the, the leading ones from A. So for every leading one in A, we add a basis uh, vector to A, to the solutions of A. Sorry, we add, uh, for every leading one in A, we add a vector into the basis of the image of A. So both of these are operating on, on leading ones. We do something once for every leading one. Now, what about the dimension of the null space? So how do we find the basic solutions to this? Well, we set up a system of equations. And for each column of the reduced row echelon form of A that does not have a leading one, those all correspond to a parameter. And each parameter is going to correspond to a basic solution. So now we've, we're ready to connect um, the dimension of the image of A and the dimension of the null space of A and N. So why is it that when you add these two things up, you get N? One way to think of this is how can we partition N into two pieces? So each column of the reduced row echelon form of A, there are N total columns. It either has a leading one or it doesn't have a leading one. If it does have a leading one, that contributes exactly one to the dimension of A. If it doesn't have a leading one, that contributes exactly one to the uh, null space of A. So there we go. We divide the columns up uh, into things that go into the image and things that go into the null space. That's it. So all of this together proves uh, the dimension theorem that for any matrix A, we have the dimension of A plus the dimension of the null space of A is N. This isn't quite a complete proof. There's one thing that we're missing um, over here in this part. Um, it's why exactly do, does um, for every leading one in A, why, does, why is it that we can just take the columns, those corresponding columns of A and form a basis? So that's something we still have to check. But if you have that, then this is the key idea of how some things go into the image and some things go into the null space. Okay, thank you very much and have a great day.